Hey friends, you are crafting with Kim Byers and today we are making some really fun Halloween things. So we're going to start out with the first project being um, a window cling project. So we're going to take two different colors of window cling and we're going to create Halloween wreaths for my back porch doors. So I have these two uh, glass double doors on the back of the house and I always want to put wreaths and things on them because people tend to come around to the back of our house instead of the front door. Um, but during this time of year we have so many friends and family over um, through Halloween and through Christmas that they tend to fall off the door which drives me crazy so this year I'm going to use window cling so nothing falls off um, so I hope you'll stick around with me if you've not ever used window cling before it can be really fun and easy if you know all the tips and tricks on how to apply it so we'll go over to Cricut Design Space. I'll show you what we're cutting. We'll come back over to the craft table. We'll weed everything. And then we will hop over to the actual doors and I'll show you how easy it is to apply window cling. If you've not already, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos. After I get done with this project today, I've got a several iron-on projects for Halloween that I'm going to whip up as well. So I hope that you will stick around and join the channel to see all of that. Okay guys, let's get going. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and I've gone ahead and pulled in the two designs that I want to work with today. So you can go into Cricut Design Space and just open up a new canvas if you want to craft along with me. But basically, you can go into images and choose anything that you want to work with, or you can do what I did. I purchased these two from Design Bundles, and then I uploaded them. So I'm going to put a little video up above that shows you how to upload designs. So here are the two designs that I am working with. I'm just going to cancel since I already have those on Canvas. And so once I brought them in, I did use the contour tool. So I clicked on it and used the contour tool. Let, let's just upload one really quick and I'll show you what I did. So we upload, add that to Canvas. It comes in as an all black design, okay? And so when it's one piece like this, see it's a basic cut up in layers, it's one piece, you're going to be able to use the contour tool. So what if you want to do two colors like I did, you're going to duplicate it and then on one of these, you're going to contour out the opposite color. So I would contour out everything um, that I didn't want to be, you know, orange. Um, and then on the other one, I would contour out that other piece. So basically, when you hit the contour tool, it just gives you an option to click and hide different elements that you don't want to cut. So I will put that video up above so that you can easily hop up and see how to do that. Um, if you would like to do two color and if you don't want to do two color like I'm doing you could just cut it all in one color in black which I think would be absolutely fabulous but since I had orange window cling I thought why not let's just fun these up a little bit okay so once you have these two designs the way that you want them to be now just a tip if you do do the contouring you're going to want to grab the entire design when you're done and you're going to want to group them which I've already done Okay, so let's go up into our machines. I'm going to be using the Cricut Maker. You could also use the Explore. You can also use the Joy, not for a design this big. These are almost 12 by 12 inches, so you would have to, you know, work within uh, the Joy parameters. But I'm going to be using the Maker today, and so let's hit Make It. Okay, so now you see that because these were attached, everything is exactly as it should be, and all you'll have to do is cut them and weed them out. So we can look at the second, so this is our second, and then our third. Now I do love saving materials. You guys know how I am. I love to save materials. So you can take these and move these around. Um, one quick note about that though, all of these need to be mirror imaged. And so when you mirror image, sometimes things you move will shift and it didn't move very much, that's good. So you can pull these up and minimize the amount of material that you're using. So instead of using a full 12, we're just using nine of the orange. And so we'll need to go here and mirror image this design. And then we'll need to mirror image the first one. Okay, so now that the designs are ready, we can go ahead and hit continue. So the next thing we'll do is select our device. So we're going to work with our maker. And when you set your base material, if you don't already have window cling here in your favorites, you can go to browse all materials, and then you can just search at the top and it's gonna pop up window cling. 
Okay, and so for these materials, you're going to use the fine point blade, um, which is the standard blade that comes with your maker and comes with your Explorer, so there's nothing fancy there to purchase. And so now let's hop over to the craft table. Okay, so here we are on the craft table, and these are the materials that we're going to use for our window cling project today. So I have black window cling, orange window cling, I have a green mat, I have my weeding tools, and I have my paper trimmer. Okay, so let's go ahead and move these things out of the way, and we'll put our first color on the mat. Okay, so we just take our window cling, and our designs are roughly 12 by 12. So I'm just going to take my ruler out. I love this paper trimmer just for this purpose. I can go all the way to 15 inches and I want roughly a 12 by 12 square, actually just shy of 12 inches, okay? Trim that out our ruler to the side and now we are going to a uh, mirror image remember this is a mirror image design so we are going to place it face up on the mat just starting in the farthest corner okay so down at one side and then you can take that scraping tool and run it across or if you have a brayer you could do that as well and that's just going to get all those bubbles out Okay, we're ready to take it over to the machine. Okay, so here we are at the Cricut Maker and we just wanna put the mat under the feeds. And we're using our fine point blade. Cut. Okay, so here we are back on the craft table and I've cut this one out. So what we wanna do now is we want to remove this from the mat. And I want to show you this um, because you always, always want to bend the mat and not the material. So your mat can take it, just flip it over, kind of bend and it will pull away and the mat will you know, snap right back to being flat, but then you don't have to worry about getting any creasing on your window cling. Okay, so now that I've cut out all three of my sheets and I've started to weed, I just wanna give you guys a few weeding tips when it comes to um, window cling. So you just want to make sure that you are very slow as you peel away and you wanna make sure that you use this blunt side of your weeding tool to hold things in place as you're pulling. Like really tiny details they may want to pull up. And so you just need to know your design well, know where things are, um, and so then you just pull away easily and slowly. So you can use the um, pointed end to pull things up, but then you can use the blunt end to make sure that like the little polka dots and things stay in place. And then you can also, because window cling will attach to itself, I would use a pair of scissors when I know that I have everything off of a, you know, a set piece. Go ahead and clip that away so it doesn't stick to it um, as you work. Now once the bulk of everything is off, go back and get out the small little details. So there are very fine elements within each one of these letters, a little piece here along the cat. So you just wanna go back in and make sure that you get all of those elements out. Pull those away. And then when you get to something like the broom, um, because it actually has multiple layers within, you wanna make sure that you're leaving the detail and taking away the excess. So reference back to your image and just make sure that you don't pull up something that you didn't mean to. And if you do, just remember that window cling is very forgiving, unlike iron-on can be. So you can always, you know, if you've still got some of the elements in place, you can replace it with your hands. Um, it's just easier if you leave it on the backer to, you know, place it onto the window. Okay, so these are my double back doors that we're going to place the designs on. Um, and so this goes out to our backyard. Put a design about right here and then one about right here. Okay, and another little trick you can do to make sure that it's centered before you place it down is lay your ruler against the window frame. And of course this ruler is straight when it's against the frame. And so you can look at your lettering. Now I can see parking is slightly cocked and I don't want that to be. So even though I'm centered, I want my lettering to be perfectly straight. So we're just going to 
slightly twist it. There we go, that's perfect. So now we have that perfect line. So we can remove our ruler. Then we just wanna take our braiding tool or our scraper, whichever one. And apply our design. See how easy this is? And it's going to be so fun. Now this would have been absolutely darling and all black, but I thought a little bit of color would be cool too. And so now we can just start peeling it away very slowly, making sure that everything is sticking to the window. Whoops, we've got a hanger on up there. Let's use our braiding tool or our scraper. Make sure that it comes off. For those of you who work with vinyl, it's much the same process. You just have to go slow and steady. And remember that window claim is readjustable. So I would even like take this backer and start, you know, kind of folding it down so that it doesn't hop back onto it. I love how detailed this is. Now guys, you could do bats or something like that. So simple. You could even place those by hand. But I'm all about some detail. Okay, so I am so excited that I decided to put these on the inside of the house instead of the outside. Um, I, my dog, I love her to death, but she puts her nose on these windows. And so I'm cleaning the outside of these windows all the time. And I think with these little bitty details, if I put this outside instead of inside, then I would have been, you know, struggling to like keep the window clean and that would have drove me nuts. And plus this is fun, right? Because you'll be on the inside of the house and be able to, to see it and it'll be darling. Okay, so then I'm just going to place my little five cents here. We'll use that brayer. Okay, I cannot wait to show this off. How cute is this? So our house is like 500 feet off the road and so you can't see any of the details on the front porch, which I guess is why everyone always comes to our back door, but this is going to be so fun. So now we'll place on this orange border and we'll put on the orange for the please and this design will be done. Okay, and so if we're going into the house, so I can see, let's just see. Oh yes, so, so cute. Now I need to get some witch brooms and put here by the back door. Okay, so they turned out really, really good. I am excited about being able to see them from my kitchen um, and with all the other decorations and things that I have going on inside the house. If you have not tried window clean before, I hope that today I inspired you to give it a whirl. If not for Halloween, do it for Christmas. It could be a simple cut too. You could do snowflakes and things like that. It doesn't have to be as detailed as I got with these. Um, and if you have any questions about any of this, please leave them down in the comments below and I will see you guys next time.